We study SL2C highest weight representations, and in particular, how finite dimensional modules fit into Verma modules. All of this in the context of the BGG category O of highest weight representations. So I assume some famili familiarity with complex Lie algebras. In particular, here we take the complex Lie algebra G is SL2C. It is three dimensional. We can name its generators H, X, and Y, and they have commutation relations, which are H with X gives us 2X. So X raises the H eigenvalue. And H with Y gives a minus 2Y, so it lowers the H eigenvalue. And then we have X with Y equal to h. From the coefficient of x in the hx commutation relation, we decide that the root lattice, lambda r, is equal to 2z. Therefore, the weight lattice of this SL2 algebra will be equal to z. Moreover, the dominant weights will be given by n. This to stay start from zero, one, etc. So these are the basics of complex Lie algebra representation theory and root lattice theory, which I suppose to be known. For each dominant high highest weight, we have a simple module or an irreducible representation of the Lie algebra, which we'll call L of lambda, and it has weights lambda as the highest weight, then lambda minus two when we lower, lambda minus four, etc., all the way up to minus lambda minus two, and then minus lambda finally. Therefore, the dimension of this simple module is lambda plus one. And for physicists, we keep in mind that lambda is equal to two times the spin, usually denoted by j. So in particular, L of naught is the trivial one-dimensional representation. L of one is the two-dimensional representation, also some, sometimes called spin a half when we go to SU2 representation, which is a particular real form of SL2C. And then L of 2 is, a, is the three-dimensional representation, which is the adjoint. Let's introduce some basis vectors, as well as how the algebra acts on them. So our basis vectors will be B0, B1, all the way up to B lambda such that we have indeed lambda plus one of them. And then H acting on V naught is proportional to, sorry, on VI is proportional to VI. It'll be lambda minus two I times VI. X on VI will be lambda minus I plus one times VI minus one. And then y acting on vi is equal to i plus 1 times vi plus 1. Moreover, we have the convention that v minus 1 is 0, as is v lambda plus 1. Then one can check this, that this representation is indeed a representation of the complex Lie algebra with the commutation relations given before. Now let's see how this finite dimensional representation fits into a Verma module. So recall that M of lambda is the Verma module. It has a highest weight state V naught of highest weight lambda. And Otherwise, it has weights lambda, lambda minus two, lambda minus four, etc., all the way down to minus infinity. 
the action of the generators on these states is precisely the one we had above. And let's analyze how the arrows work on a weight diagram. So if we have here V minus one, here V zero, here V lambda, and here V lambda plus one, then we can see that we can go up and down on the weight diagram using the operators X and Y, except when we have I equal to minus one, if I is equal to minus one, then Y doesn't go down. Or if I equal is equal to lambda plus one, then we can't go up using X. All the other up and down errors exist. Now, of course, for these special cases to arise, we need that lambda is an element of the dominant weights. Otherwise, I will never be equal to lambda plus one. So what do we have? We have that M of lambda is irreducible and simple if lambda is not an element of lambda plus. So lambda is different from 0, 1, 2, etc. Now, M of lambda has a maximal submodule. In fact, it's the only submodule which will be equal to m minus lambda minus 2, because it has weight lambda minus twice lambda plus 1. So it has a maximal subdual m minus lambda minus 2, which is again a Verma module, because it has this highest weight state, um, v lambda plus 1, on which it is built. Now, so this is if lambda is an element of lambda plus. And then clearly, we can divide m lambda by m minus lambda minus 2. And the representation we get is exactly the simple module L lambda that we discussed before. So this is how simple finite dimensional modules fit into the theory of Verma modules. And this phenomenon uh, wildly generalizes.